Okay. Uh, so far, uh, you can see that uh, we have downloaded uh, and uh, imported or loaded the requirement uh, required different packages. So NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn are the fundamental ones. Okay. Then right now we are using the scikit-learn as a tool to implement our uh, linear regression model. So you don't have to bring in the complete sklearn. Uh, whatever part of the sklearn you require, you can bring it and you can uh, right. Uh, you can import it. You can load it. So that uh, everything, everything is not. It's not needed to uh, to get loaded. First point. And uh, if you if you load everything right, there's a problem of unnecessary wastage uh, uh, of the memory of your computer. So that that's what is another feature of uh, our. Uh, the Python and the Python libraries. So we don't have to bring everything. Okay. So one thing I want to highlight why I, instead of writing the three lines over here, you can, since everything is coming from the same sklearn dot preprocessing import, you can, you can write one thing, then comma space, second one comma, that will also work. I didn't do that because if I do that, it will go to the right and I may have to keep putting it to the right side, left side, I have to drag it so that everybody can see. All right, so I didn't do that, but yes, right? Uh, whatever you are importing from the same, right, part of the library, you can simply write in the same line, separated with the commas. Okay, so I hope everybody has received the data set by now. So as a, our first step, we are supposed to bring it, let me call it as, the byte share is equal to it's a csv file so read csv and obvious means first we need to check what is there in it okay so what type of uh, contents we have, what are the various columns you have, right? You can definitely check it, right? So that is the bike share dot I'll go with say 10 different first rows, 10 first rows. So as soon as I enter that, you can see, right? We see this. Okay, so just to reduce it, I'll just remove that. I'll get only five. I think that's better for me. Right, you can see this has the various number of rows. How many rows we have, we don't know yet. We'll come to know soon. So, but the number of columns I can definitely see. Right, instant, D, T, E, day, season, year, month, hour, holiday, weekday, working day, Right, weather sit, temp, a temp, humidity, wind speed, casual, registered, count. If you remember, something very similar to this, right, was brought up in the discussion when we, right, we're talking about the uh, definition of a problem, right, maybe in the very first session of the linear regression. So we have various parameters over here. Right. Let me try to uh, let me try to show you something. Okay. What are the various fields that we have here? I have made a small uh, snapshot of that so that it becomes easy for us to understand. Okay. So the first part is this. So you see, these are the various fields that we have. Okay, in addition to that, I also have the few more fields. Okay, so I'll just paste it uh, below this. Okay, so one by one, let's let's have a look. 
So there is a DTE day. You you open what you see on your screen, right? Not not this one. Uh, whatever you have, uh, when you are running on your screen, you see that, right? So look at this this particular table to understand what it is. So there is a DTE day which talks about right the early date. Okay, then it says season one for spring, two for summer. That that's the coding that has been happening. Okay, in your data set, it's a particular column. That column, if it is one, it means spring. It's a two summer, three for fall, four for winter. HR stands for the R. Holiday means whether the day is considered as a holiday or not. That particular date which we are considering, is it a holiday or not? Then it also talks about, uh, right, working day or not, right? Then weather sit actually, right, is actually talking about four different types of weathers right uh, which might affect the bike share counts in a if on a particular day so one for a clear right Sec two for mist plus cloudy what's the meaning you can see you can read it on your screen on the right side okay then the three actually is a light snow and the four falls for uh, right uh, heavy rain and ice pellets so these are the four different uh, situations scenarios Consider uh, under the weathers it right particular column. So you can see every column is in some way representing a feature that decides the uh, the y value. That's a bike count. All right. Then we have a TMP for temperature in Celsius. A temp again. It's like a field slide. Now nowadays, whenever we check the weather apps, it says that. Actual temperature is say 35, but you feel like 40, right? Because of right various other reasons like humidity, etc. So humidity is relative, and you have one more column called wind speed, and uh, casual number of non-registered users, right? Uh, non-registered users. So there is a facility. Let's assume that in in your uh, bike sharing right company, you allow non-users also non-users of your app also can book can maybe at, come to a particular point and make a payment and take your bike right that that's what is casual then registered so registered are the ones who actually are members of right your app and uh, maybe uh, you 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 can provide uh, some offers to them if they are a member Right, maybe maybe it's that kind. Okay, so there's a registered and the actual Y value comes into picture. That's C and T for us. All right. So the number of uh, total renders. So it's 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 obvious that casual plus registered is going to give you the C and T. All right. So you can you can see the same thing over here. Right. So that, that's the data set. Now we need to this one, you mean this one? Okay, done, all right. Okay, so column wise, we know what is happening in our data. Right, but our next objective is to see, right, get more details, right? So what we do, like our previous cases, we'll, uh, maybe I suggest to look at the various data types. That's also going to give you some more insight about, right, our data set. So the variable name we created, it's, uh, it's a bike share, I'll use maybe D types. So we have uh, int for almost, right? Instant, season, year, month, holiday, working day, et cetera, are already in integer. The temp, A temp, humidity, right? Uh, wind speed, et cetera, we can see it's, it's actually, right? Uh, in the floating format. So as we have some of the data in the floating format, we can guess that and we can guess and we can understand that. Uh, this particular, uh, these columns are continuous variables, okay? 
And uh, again, that is that should be clear from our data set. Let's go back. So you can see here. So everything, right, except the date day, you can see season, year, month, etc. are integers, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? We have. So it's not just integer, even you can think as categorical because holiday, yes or no, weekday, yes or no, 1, 0, working day, yes or no type, right? So the weather sits, if you see here, right, it says 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a categorical. It's not taking any value other than 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So yes, right? We, we, we get some details about our data set, right? And the temperature, A temp, humidity, etc. you can see they are float. So wind speed 0, 0.0 means it's a floating value. All right, so yes, whatever we see from our, from the various data types, it should be very clear that we have uh, integer values, we have uh, the floating values, right? Also object, right? Because date time is an object. Uh, so definitely it will be an object for us. Okay, right, uh, fine. Now we have, sufficient insight right we'll we'll be looking at the size of the data set as well but uh, right now let me see right uh, okay i'll ask a question so that uh, people can try all right so let it let it be a, a what you call interactive session right i'll ask a question so that you apply whatever we have studied so far right numpy pandas right visualization right etc you can apply that So this is the question. So I want you to tell me, right, which R is the busiest? All right, so which R is the busiest? In the sense, hardly I want, right? R can be, right? It's, I think I think it starts from zero, because zero, one, two, three, four, starting from midnight, 12 o'clock, 0, 1, 2, it's a 24 hour format. When I checked earlier, that, that's what I, I observed from this. So if you want to get a more detailed view of the data set, open the data set outside this, okay? As a CSV, using Microsoft Excel, you can actually open that, okay? So just double click on that, it will open. Keep it ready with you on, uh, it's open because every time writing a command and visualizing something may become, become difficult to you. So my question is that, Right, we have hours starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 up to 22, 23, no 24, because once again, 0. So up to 23, totally 24, right? Different uh, hours are there in your data set. So with irrespective of any day, don't consider, consider a day, particular day. Generally, right, which hour is very busy? I want you to answer that. I prefer if you, I'm happy if you can plot and answer that question. I don't want a count or like, okay, evening four o'clock is very busy. This much is a count I don't want, okay? So I, just, I should be able to see that it's a busiest, right? In the sense, number of people using the bike share at maybe four o'clock, five o'clock, that, that's what I expect because uh, Evening time is busy, right? So, or even the more morning, we may expect same thing. So, so eight, seven, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, or somewhere, maybe. Okay, so that that's what most of the bike sharing uh, companies uh, are facing as a challenge, right? Uh, uh, one thing, one 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 of their major problem is that uh, during say the early the morning uh, traffic's. Uh, you don't find any bikes in the residential areas because everybody is starting from their home, taking the bike share day, this thing and going to their office, right? At the same time, during that period, uh, there'll be no bike docking stations available near the uh, offices, okay? Because everybody is coming and everybody docking their vehicle. Some of the vehicles will not get uh, appropriate uh, docking. So this is a problem, right? At the same time, evening, it's a reverse, okay? Near the offices, you don't find any vehicles, right? Near the housing uh, housing societies or uh, the residential areas of a particular city, 
right? Uh, it's hard to find out uh, the docking stations. So we'll get an insight of our data set, right? Because of this, that's why I have raised a question here, right? Again, this is not the only answer. What I'm, I'll try to write something. I'll, I'll give some time for you to try by yourself as well. But you see, what I'm, whatever I'm trying to write here is my version of the answer, right? Again, you can get the, get into the same graph, same uh, conclusion by using your own graph as, well. okay? First, let me show. Then I'll give time for you to maybe share your screen and discuss if you want. All right. So this is my answer. What I'll try to do, I'll try to group my complete data set using a particular column. If you see the column name, there is a column called HR. So over here, this is what I'm talking about. Rly, I want. So R0 something, R1 something, etc. So let me try to do that. Okay. So this is R. But not just grouping is not enough. If you remember the basics of group by, group by works better if you do some aggregation, such as finding the sum, okay? Or because right now I'm I'm trying to group my data set according to the hourly basis, but I want to take the sum of number of bikes used every hour. So that means I should use this variable, the one you, you see I highlighted on the screen, right? That's the one which I'm supposed to use because I want to see the count. Every hour, what is the count? So I prefer doing dot sum of, uh, count, okay, then I need to say, show me a particular column that is count. Okay, oh, I don't need two brackets, just one count. Now the Pythonic way comes into picture. I don't have to assign this to some variable and then I, I, I don't have to ask for plotting. Okay, that's the beauty of Python, which I like the most. So don't write another row saying that this is who is, is say this is assigned to y, then y dot plot is not required. Okay, so what I do dot plot, which one you want? Say bar. Okay, as uh, I was trying to explain, you can see morning, it increases six, seven, eight, eight is the peak. At the same time, during the daytime also, you have enough uh, number of bikes getting shared, but towards the evening, like say 17, that's 5 p.m., 18, 6 p.m., right? When people actually travel. Right, so uh, maybe uh, from 10 o'clock to 15, 10 to 15, that's 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. That That's a normal uh, bike share, all right? But uh, along with that, people who work also start sharing. That's why you have a spike that's at, uh, at 4 p.m. Then you can also see an increased value that's at uh, five and six, then it keeps on reducing. Okay, so again, my code, if you feel difficult, no need to go with that, okay? So I, I because I'm using the complete uh, facility provided by the Python to do this. So writing dot, dot, something dot may become difficult. So you have to go back, check what we did when we discussed matplotlib, right? See that and you can try to get this graph, okay? This is not the only answer, I repeat, this is not the only right answer. You can do it in your own way, explore, take time and do that. Okay, one more question. So what we are trying to do now, if we are trying to get insight of our data, right? Before I go and build a model, it is always necessary to know what is my data set, okay? Again, these are, Whatever questions I'm going to form and I'm going to give now, those are the not only few questions which can be generated. There are n number of questions that can be generated to look into your data, okay? Yes, so let me go ahead. Let me try to get another question for you. All 
Okay, so this is the next question. People play strike. Okay, visualize the distribution of count, casual, and registered variables. So uh, it's not all the same will not come at once. I want you to see right one by one. So visualize the distribution of count. Next graph, visualize the distribution of casual variables. To visualize the distribution of registered variable okay so one of them if you get other one how to get how to see that you it's it's pretty straightforward okay just i need to change uh, a particular variable name so that it can show you the distribution so i have a question please answer that in the chat my question is that which particular plot is going to help you to get the distribution means what it is a probability pdf so try to recall the basics we had discussed in uh, terms of uh, matplotlib and the CBOR. This is related to either of them. So we had discussed many, uh, what you call, plots. Out of those plots, which plot will help you out to get uh, an answer to this? Because the question says distribution. So distribution is PDF, probability distribution. So we have two possibilities, one to get using discrete, one to get the answer using the continuous way or maybe a hybridized way, okay? So discrete as well as continuous, I can bring all together. That's also that facility also we have, okay? So my question is related to that. If you're, uh, I, I want you to try to recall that, at least that name of the plot and give an answer. Uh, most of the plot names are actually straightforward. It's it's not very hard to remember uh, uh, over there because they have given the names of the plots in such a way that but if you remember the name or it is easy to remember the name thinking that, okay, this is what I want to do, then this is the plot. Okay, so that, that's why I'm saying. Uh, so I'll, I'll go with the answer. Okay. Let me try to do that. It's actually present in the C board. SNS dot. There is what is called as a dist plot. Just tell which one you want to see, right? So uh, first, let me let me go with the the bike share of the count itself. Bike share dot count. Actually, it says so, uh, right? There is a Right. Uh, okay. So as you can see, uh, there is a, there's a warning saying that uh, there may not be the same thing coming up in the upcoming versions. Right. But uh, yeah. So as of now, it is supported. So no problem. We can use it. Okay, there's a question from Gaurav, box plot. A box plot uh, may not help us here. Uh, if you remember, it actually is used to represent the outliers, visualize the outlier. We, it actually shows a IQR interquartile range plus, right? It also shows you which is a median and right, what are the outliers? Remember? Okay, okay, good. Perfect, perfect. So this particular command is not running. This one is not running, sns.displot. What's yes. the uh, what's the error that you are getting? Is there any error or uh, it's simply taking time to run. I 
actually it's showing me so many graphs with the uh, without the uh, error message no i don't know just I'm keep on this. running so let just, me just check uh, just check like this only only try to run again right you can you can stop that okay go to the kernel right maybe shut down the kernel and then restart then you run everything from the beginning let's see what happens okay okay anybody else any anything any doubt you have related to this please let me know Okay, now you know the answers for other two questions, right? One is a count. You can do the same thing. You can we can we can try to write like this sns dot dist plot. Bike share dot casual. Right, you get a casual plot, and this plot register. So the distribution is being shown, right? And what is the chance also is being shown along the y-axis. Okay, now, anyway, I'll try to form some more questions. I, again, this question may not be giving you an insight because what you already know, I'm trying to I'm trying to make you to write a code to get that as an answer from right uh, from the machine. Okay, so I want you to find out what what is meant by what are the values that uh, is given for say weekday, right? In the sense, describe me a weekday is my question. What do you mean by weekday? You have to tell. Okay, you have to write a code so that. What do you mean by weekday? It should tell. Weekday means what values you have over there. All right. So from a particular column called weekday, whenever weekday says one, right? What is corresponding to whenever a weekday means, right? It's a working day, right? Normally it is considered as working day. So what are the uh, values the weekday says whenever the working day is equal to true. So what do you mean by a working day is my question. I can actually form it in a different way. Uh, the question could be something like, uh, give the obtain the relationship between a uh, working day and a weekday. That, that, that makes more sense. Let me, let me try to type it. Okay, so. Find the relationship between and again specific to this data. Okay, not a general one, right? No need to bring a calendars and all the picture, right? So please try to answer this question with respect to this data set only. So in general, if you think, right, a working day, working day will be starting from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, right. So whenever the working day is given as one in your table, just just refer uh, the given data set. Open open that in the 
uh, what do you call Excel sheet. Okay, as as you open it in the Excel sheet, you will see that whenever the working day particular column is one, right, it will be either of them, like Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday. So that's what I want you to bring an answer here by writing a code. Okay. Anyway, Monday, Tuesday will not come because in the whole data set, there is no question of Monday, Tuesday, etc. They have written one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, starting from Sunday, right, till here. So maybe you will be able to bring out, okay, whenever I say working day, it will be one of the one of the following days, like one or two or three or four or five. This is what I expect. Okay, I'll give maybe 30 more seconds so that, right? If you have an answer, we can discuss. I want to access this data set. What is my condition? I want to look at a column in the bike share that actually talks about whether a day is working day or not. And from my whatever knowledge I have related to this data set, I know that if it is a working day, that is equal to one. Okay, now I'll come to know that that part of my complete data where the bike shape, where the working day is one which means it is a working day now i need to use this data and look at what i have to look at the weekday because i want to relate between weekday and the working day now i understood that okay this part of my complete data set which is represented in the form of a data frame right now okay that is the, the one which actually corresponds to the working day. I just have sliced it using this technique. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, then dot, I have to look at which particular column? Uh, week, there is a week day, right? Let me, let me check because it's not suggesting. Let me go back. Yeah, there is a weekday, small letter, everything. All right, so I wrote that dot weekday it will tell that what are the possible values i don't want everything i just want unique of them only one one of the values will come only one so dot can i write uh, not suggesting let me type u n i q u e Okay, let's let me explain this once again what I have done, right? The first part is that go to this data frame bike share in which go to a column called work day and find those rows which have the value equal to equal to one. That means you are trying to slice only the working days from your data frame. And I'm saying that in that data frame, that's a piece of the original data frame, look at a weekday. And in that week, they tell me only the unique numbers. If at all it was something like day names given, like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you will be seeing only those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because in a weekday, only these are the ones. <coughs> Sorry. These are the ones which are considered as the weekdays. I hope the question is clear. Right? Question and answer. This is again my, my way of answering. Definitely you get a different ways, different many ways are there in which you can find it. But yes, it may not be the pure Pythonic way in which like you can see the code here. It can be slightly different. Okay, six is also a weekday. Saturday is a weekday. Maybe it's for us, but uh, just check. If it is there, this has to come here. Just check the data set once again. According to this particular command, it's saying that only one, two, three, four, five. 
All right, just check again. Sir, yes, so from yes, the ahead, bike go. share. Okay, so from the bike share, huh. uh, you uh, first collect the working day. Okay, by this uh, bike share, bike share dot working day equal to equal to one, where huh. the value equals to one. Yes. So in every column or in a, uh, I should say in every row where there is one, it will get uh, collected, right? Yeah. Then in that you put the weekday. So we need that uh, weekday where, yes, we need that uh, weekday column where value equals to one. True. Okay. Okay. And so I'm asking only the unique values. values. Unique values out of it, not all the values, only unique values. In the sense, if there is one, I don't want one more one to come in my answer because I just want to know whether one is there or not. That's all. Okay. So that's why unique is given as a last function of that. Okay. Same thing. Can you can you try to find out the relation between weekday? And a holiday? Is it possible? No. Because weekday and working day, I just did. Just you need to make some modifications. I want weekday and a holiday. I'll tap the question for you. Meanwhile, you try to explore how to get the answer, okay? My mistake. Weekday and holiday. It's obvious because uh, festivals may come in a weekday and the weekday becomes a holiday, right? So in the complete data set, right? What all weekdays are there which are also holidays? Is my question. So you'll you'll write something very similar to you can write something similar to this line, line number 12. Okay. So yeah, we have one answer saying that zero and one. That means zero is uh I have a doubt here, uh Gauro, because of uh, Zero is considered as a weekend. Zero and six are weekends for us because from the previous answer, we can see that one, two, three, four, five is the weekday and the working day. All right. Yeah. So we have another answer from uh, Mani saying that, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, mostly this because maybe a chance that, right, in, in one month, Monday and Thursday were holidays, right? Next month, Tuesday and like that. So again, I am what I was expecting is something very similar to this. Okay, what Manish is saying, there is a chance. Okay, let me let let me try to write uh, my code and let's verify that. Okay, bike share of bike share dot. Now what I'm supposed to look? It's a holiday. Equal to equal to one, right? Holiday should be there, but my condition is that the week, uh, yeah, day dot unique. Yeah, same answer. That's good, Manish. Okay, I'll try to bring another question. Say, find out those days, uh, which is not a holiday, and it's also not a working day, right? So find out those days in your data set, which is not, okay, which is uh, not a holiday and not a working day. All right. So it means I, I'm actually talking about weekend, basically. Find out weekend. 
But if I ask that becomes a very straightforward question. So I try to make it complicated, right? So by asking that, find out those days which are not holidays because holidays will come in the weekdays. Then you, then you are taking an off from office, work, colleges, schools. So that's a holiday and not a working day. So working days already we have seen that is one, two, three, four, five. Let, let me say that I don't know that in my data set, I have only zero and six also present. It, when I made a query, it said that one, two, three, four, five is working day. Again, one, two, three, four, five can be holiday. So my question is what, which are the remaining days left in my data set? So that actually, uh, strictly speaking, that's nothing but the weekends. Okay, so what are the weekends? I want you to find out. Please try to write a code. If you, if you get an answer, put that, what answer you get on the chat. Let's see. Okay, we have one answer zero, fine. Others, please try and uh, put your answers. Okay, we have six also coming up, fine. So I can take zero and six, maybe, right? Any any other answers? Anybody else getting any different answer than this? Put your answers in the chat. We'll discuss about that. I'll put two conditions now. First one is that the bike share dot the holiday is not holiday. Okay, so one more answer saying that six and seven. Okay, just check uh, whether the data set has seven. All right, because uh, if it is zero to six, right, because seven days are represented in, in by indexing zero to six, I guess. Okay, just verify Niranjan whether you have seven present in your data set. Okay. Uh, if it is there, then maybe we can take it, all right? So my first question is that in, in this particular uh, case, I want to say that holiday is, it's not a holiday, so it should be zero. Holiday is one means, yes, that day is a holiday. So it's not a holiday. And I'll put an and condition. Oh, sorry. I just have to bring and. What's the other part of the question? It says that, it's not a working day, right? When I say it's not a working day, I will have to type the bike share dot working day. All right. Again, you see that sorry, inside this equal to equal to zero. So find out right those particular rows in my data frame which satisfies both these conditions right holiday equal to zero and working day equal to zero then go to the weekday right so once again the step remains same dot go to this particular column and find out the unique values in it okay let's see it is zero and six. So as expected, uh, so the week ends are represented in our data set by zeros and ones. Uh, not zero and one, my mistake, sorry, zero and six. Okay, fine. Let's go for uh, another visualization. This is a question. My next question is on another type of visualization. Okay. Very important graph. So I am asking this now. 
uh, month wise how many casual uh, bike shares are there and how many registered bike shares are there specific to the year 2011 i am asking okay so try to find it so this is the question Keep your Excel sheets open, okay? Because there is a, a right. You you have to use the complete big picture. You you should use the big picture of the complete data, right? And try to get things done. So it says that visualize month-wise count of both casual as well as registered. So casual is a column. Registered is another column in your data set, right? You want to make groups now right like the previous case we had the group sorry we have the we had the groups of uh what you call the, the i think i think r's right r wise which hour it is we have right group the things all right but now i'm not asking hourly on hourly basis i'm asking monthly basis so apply that go back check the code apply that all right then as soon as the group by comes into picture right you need to do an aggregation like some mean etc now you see you have to do that some right will come into picture because some of counts not count casuals in a particular month some of registered in a month all right so that's what is expected and i think i think that will do the job right i want you to refer to uh, this is a hint okay the hint is line number eight of our code in my code it is eight just check check that okay so something like this is what is expected so we need two graphs or if somebody can plot both of them in a single graph i'll be the happiest okay right what it says that yes one graph for casual one graph for register this is what i expect but yes somebody can remember that what we had done when we discussed about uh, the con the fundamentals of uh, matplotlib and cbor something flashes in your mind and you think that okay i can bring both of them together right i'll be the happiest all right so let me know your answer Once you have your answer, let me know, right? I want it. I expect few of you to answer at least, right? So that I want you to show your screen and we'll discuss about that. Okay. So this is what I want for this particular question. I have another question here before you uh, before you answer maybe the question is uh, how do you differentiate the years here 2011 2012 maybe you have something right what what is the logic that you can use again specific to this data set i'm asking okay that's why i said keep your excel sheets open i want you to answer looking at the excel sheet
anybody other than looking at the date column is there any way using which you can differentiate the years yeah yes yes manish that's that that's what i was expecting so if you look at uh, you don't have to use any complicated technique over here right simply look at uh, a particular column right called yr okay that actually for the complete year the data set that actually belongs to year 2011 it actually has zeros in it if you scroll down and check the years 2000 12 right because this data set has only two years that that's that's one thing for me uh maybe if even if it is there for different years there are there's a different number corresponding to that am i right so year equal to zero for 2011 so you can use that logic to identify the year rather than using this particular column so how do you extract the part of the uh, your table which corresponds to year 2011, you simply say that that particular YR equal to equal to zero, right? Means that it will check and it will extract only that part of your table, which is which belongs to year 2011. Yes, good observation, Manish. This is required, right? Because always right, writing a complex code may not help. Uh, we need to look at the data clearly and we need to understand the data, right? And then you can write a code in a wise fashion, right? So that you can get the answer in much easier way. Okay, so this is what was expected. Yes, please go ahead. Now you know the answer what to do. How to extract 2011. All right. Extract 2011. Then the rest of the part I already have mentioned what you are supposed to do. Refer to the line number eight, maybe a different line in your code. But that plot, uh, which we have used, the, that bar plot, right? Same thing I want you to use here. Twice. Once for casual, once for register. Okay, anybody having answers, please let me know. Okay, I have enabled the sharing. Anybody who gets an answer can share your screen. Anybody get uh, one of the graphs or both the graphs? It's fine. No problem. Share. Right. Let's discuss. And I also would like to know, did anybody get uh, the answer in a single graph? So what's happening here? I'm checking for the year 2011. Then I'm asking after you select that, make the groups. Group by, 
So group by what? Group by I want month. So it's a function. So you have to call the function tell month. All right. Then what do you want to do? You want to take the sum, right? You want to take the sum of the two columns. What are the two columns you have to specify, right? One is the casual column. And the second column is the registered column, right? According to this, I'm, I, I said that, okay, do give me a groups in this. And I I have to say that, right, what I want, right? So in, in again, inside the, uh, in the form of an array, right? So again, you will say that the casual and register okay so you specify this okay it gives you the required uh, data now and now you need to specify what i want Sorry. okay so i have done till here right so i said that okay give me the casual dot registered right of the data based on some condition dot it's a data i'm i have to ask the plot now so get the data then plot which one bar okay maybe let's see whether let me check what we get here okay anybody getting this What's a better way? What's a better way to visualize this? Can anybody suggest a different type of this graph, which actually can give me a better analysis? Again, better is defined in my own way, right? Maybe for some of you, this itself is better. Absolutely fine with that. Okay, no problem. So there is what is called as a stacked bar graph do you remember so that becomes very easy now very easy simply specify stacked equal to true just see what happens all right whichever you prefer you can use it all right so don't want a stack just remove this part stacked equal to true if you remember uh, remove it comes one next to other. Okay, let me ask say 2012 means what do you do? Sir, if a code fits the college, okay, Sir, scroll. Kar Okay, I'll start from the beginning. So try to understand step by step, right? What I did, I first asked for, okay, from the whole data set, give me the year equal to equal to zero, only that part. After that, I said, okay, now make the groups according to which column, according to the variables that are present in the month. So like month-wise, it has been formed into group. Then I said, take the sum according to these two. Okay, according to these two columns, take the sum and I need only the two columns of the result. That is again, casual and registered. Sum of according to the casual and registered and show me only some, only the sums of casual and the registered values. So month wise, how much is casual? How much is registered is what I'm asking. That's why I'm writing casual registered once inside the function and once outside the function. Okay, so do that. Yes, sir. All right, once it is done, 
now I have the complete data readily available. Then I say, show me this graph. Okay, so this facility is nowhere available in any other programming language. So that that's the beauty of Python. So everything, so many, so many things I wanted to do. Pandas will do majority of the job. Then along with pandas, I can bring the matplotlib seaborn in the same one line. You see, this is many things have been done in a single line. So this is what I expect people to do at the end, towards the end, once you are practiced well enough, right? You can definitely do this, right? Practice is required. So the same question I asked once again here, right? I know how, how to, I, I know you will answer that. Okay, change year to the corresponding number, maybe one or two, look at the table and check 2012 corresponds to which number in YR? Okay, so that's my next question. I think you, you can answer, right? I'll just, this is my next question. What is the correlation between the various features we have in this particular data set? Okay, so I'm asking a pretty much pretty straightforward question here. Bring the heat map. So just go to the help, see how to get a heat map, bring that and Type it here. Okay, anybody gets an answer, right? Please uh, tell me. You can share your uh, share your screen, and we can uh, see what you got. We can discuss. All right. Anybody? Okay, let's see. It's a present in uh, the Seaborn. Okay, so Seaborn dot heat map. You have to specify two things here. The first thing is uh, what's your data? That is uh, bike share. Right, I'll just say that uh, dot. Do you have core? Yeah, correlation. Let me check whether this works. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll see. Yeah. So the, the, so the light color has highest. So you can see along the diagonal, we have the highest correlation. And as it becomes darker, there is lesser correlation. So we can see that, right? The humidity actually has lesser correlation over here between wind speed, casual, and the count. So also the weather sit has pretty much, right? Lesser correlation. And you can see less correlation between the working day with casual and so on. So that's how you do the analysis if required. 
but one of the very important graph uh, to be visualized to look at the correlation how each of the parameters or each of the features in your data are correlated if you want to see this is the best one. okay so you can do that or you can i think i can even specify right let's let's check how it looks like if i change the color map okay there is a parameter if you remember called uh, c map you can specify there is one called rdbu so it's again red and blue but blue becomes uh, blue is the highest red is the lowest okay so maybe that that should work okay yeah this is how it works it's optional doesn't matter right information still remains same so just specifying a color map will change the colors that are present over there so anyway it it was already discussed in the uh, the color maps were already discussed when we discussed about the uh, matplotlib seaborn part okay just go back if you want to change i don't remember any other names as now so there's one i remember so i just uh, brought it but others yes you can go back check the material over there and you can change the color maps okay so uh, i think in a in a uh, discussion about the data right you can do a lot of uh, uh, data munging over here right uh, you can see right uh, you can try to get more details of the data for sure okay but uh, anyway we are halfway through so let's uh, go to the actual part as well so i'll form a next question uh, my next question is right i want you to decide and drop of oh, just a second give me a second yeah drop the now it depends on how do you decide what is the unwanted column okay we are open for discussion just look at the columns that are present over here you can see here instant season year etc we have many things present over here so tell me what do you think okay What do you think? Which all the columns we can drop? Temp. Okay. nothing specific about this heat map okay i am asking something looking at your actual data set so if there is a number there is a numerical value somehow that is related to your final y okay that that's the point now if you can take the temperature as a a valid right uh, column i suggest you to keep it for the time being maybe when we when we go ahead with the discussion of machine learning we'll discuss that out of these parameters how to leave okay now my question is that from your actual data right example i'll give you say that look at the instant it's just a number 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so and so that has nothing to do with your y value so you can drop it that that that's my question now i already gave one answer i'm going to drop the according to me instant is not required has nothing to do with the five value. I, I don't know whether temp works or not. Uh, a temp, humidity, etc., are really required or not. I, I don't know really right now. So let's say that let's keep them. Okay. So if you if you know some advanced methods using which you could decide that means as of now, let's hold to that. Okay. Let's not use them. Right. And uh, right. So like that. Are there any other columns in your data which can be neglected and straightforward by just looking at that i should be able to understand that okay this has nothing to do with my y call that is a count so one thing anyway i'll start with that okay uh bike share one i'll call it as bike share one is equal to 
the bike share uh, i want to what's, what's a command if you remember drop you want to drop some columns means you call a function called drop then in an array in a list you specify what are the names of the columns that you want to drop so just now as you have seen right i said i'm going to drop instant of oh, what's that means it's not suggesting instant okay then which the other one any anybody can can you can you suggest look at your uh, open excel sheet and try to answer okay so ones or zeros if there is yes no type all are required okay right humidity maybe if it is a value like 0 0.0 0 0.01 0 0.05 we'll keep it right if all are same yes we can try to remove okay if for every situation the column remains same throughout means we can remove okay one condition is that how about date date is an object you can see it's a, it's in the text format anyway it's of no use for me i guess what do you think are you are you okay with that can we remove the d t e d a y there is a column there is a particular column can we remove and uh, right uh, let, let let me let me go back and check see this is what i'm doing this is an instant which is one two three four number keeps on changing number keeps on increasing has nothing to do with y this was the next column which is saying that okay right that that's that's not that's what i don't want okay i can remove season right you know the values are one two three four year zero one two etc those are the pretty much valid values right numerical values will try to keep okay but numerical values or text values which have nothing to do with my final value i'll remove that that's a point okay somebody is us and talking but i cannot hear uh there is a there's a lot of noise manish i cannot uh, hear you can you repeat looks like you are very far from the mic uh mic is not picking up any of your voice only only some background noise okay anybody else See, D T D A Y is actually an object. Means it is a text. If you if you look at the type of data, right? So D T D A Y is an object. Machine does not understand that unless and un until you convert that into numerical value. Text machine will not understand. It's a it's actually in the text format, right? So if it is in text, you say yes, no, hello, hi, hello. Machine will never understand that. You have to bring some other libraries to make machine to understand what you are actually seeing so even this date every date looks like same for it it simply takes it as a text so machine will not understand something which is considered as text okay that's why i am removing that text processing techniques will come you will learn under nlp natural language processing there you will understand the why why what what do i mean by machine will not understand text okay right so because of that i have re i'll remove this so others are actually pretty much varying values right either they are categorical value or they are floating values continuous numbers all right so right let's keep them right so as of now let's try to remove this but i have to say that remove a column okay so how do you say remove the column so you have to specify that by using a keyword called axis for right this is equal to one for column and let's do that okay so no error that is fine so let me check the shape now now i am looking at how what's my data set size okay 
bike share one dot shape let's see okay so many rows 15 columns okay now all right i'll ask another question this is my next question i want you to understand and I write a code I want you to identify which of my columns are categorical ones and which of the columns are continuous ones. All right, anybody, uh, can you name some of the continuous features? So if you look at the data, uh, the continuous variables are the ones which are taking the floating values. Right, I can see four floating types, right? That is a temp, a temp, HUM for humidity and the wind speed. Okay, so I, I'll put that. One is temp or temperature, then the relative temperature, that's actually A, A temp, Humidity. The wind speed. Okay, so those are the continuous variables. Remaining, right, uh, we'll write, remaining everything will be separating it out into the categorical variable. Anybody, uh, can you, uh, do you remember anything from the uh, previous topic or the, the theory part of uh, uh, the linear regression where we actually have discussed a particular topic uh, wherein we are supposed to do something. We, we are supposed to do an operation, right? With respect to the continuous features. All right, that's why we are separating them out. Okay, anybody, anybody, are you able to recall? Please go ahead and please try to answer my question. Why we are separating this? So it was already present in the form of a data frame. All the columns are together. Now we are separating things out. So why we are separating is my question. If you are able to recall, yes, please go ahead. We are straightforward we, uh, in, a, in a very simple fashion. We are trying to implement whatever we had discussed earlier on that day when we discussed the uh, the fund of maths and the theory behind this. Okay, so we are trying to implement that. Anybody who remembers why we are doing this, what what's happening, right? Please go ahead. So season, year, month, wherever you see the discrete values. Okay, holiday. Then I think weekday, it's a one column left. W E A T H E R S I T. One, two, three, four, five, six. Plus four. Okay. Right. I separated out uh, the continuous features and the categorical features. So we have discussed something called as a normalization, and uh, it comes under a particular topic called as a feature scaling. We need to scale the features. It's actually one of the very important step under machine learning algorithms. And the range of all the features will be normalized so that each feature contributes uh, 
approximately same to the final uh, outcome that is y right in this case we are estimating y. so each of the continuous feature has to provide a its own share right to the decision that can be done by using what is called as a scaling so if you remember we have performed the scaling right by using a particular column my every value in the column minus the mean correct you subtract the mean and divide by the sigma this is what is a normalization always does right so we have to apply the scaling on the continuous variables right of a given data so this is what we had discussed earlier right try to recall all right so i'll try to uh, we already have the scaling function you don't have to write a code to do that okay so just let me show you we already have uh, right there are several types of scalars available right but i think we discuss only the standard scalar right so i will implement only the standard scalar but anyway so i expect you to refer the other types of scalars available and ex explore that and try to implement that okay there is min max scalar uh, i had in mind that maybe if it is required i need that's why i imported that all right but yes right now we'll be using the standard scalar only so how to use a scalar it is present in the scikit-learn right we already have imported that uh, library and this particular standard scalar is already with us so what we do now is i'll, I'll create an instant of that okay so i can call it as okay let me give a short name std standard uh, scalar is equal to standard scalar this is how you uh, make an instant of it then i'll call it as a scaled uh, data right you have to call it using the data frame itself so pd dot make a new data frame after applying your scalar okay so how do you apply the scalar this is how you apply the scalar so you can refer the standard scalar right how to how to get the help of it if you remember standard scalar question mark then you run it it gives you a complete user okay it gives you a complete uh, help of this so we have a question uh, from deepak saying that what's the use of uh, scaling right so if you remember right the complete explanation i'll not give right now because it's already discussed but i'll, I'll try to make it as quick as possible all right so scaling is required to make sure that each and every continuous feature of your data set contributes equally to your final uh, variable right this is applicable in what is called as the uh, the regression problems right so in order to achieve that you will perform what is called as a scaling there are multiple versions of scaling available one which is very straightforward and very easy is a standard scalar normally what it does it will simply normalizes your data right between right uh, sorry mean zero sigma equal to say or sigma square equal to one so not normal distribution we know so the whole column will be converted into that so that you, automatically this is going to have a every data will be of the same type so that they have equal contribution on your phi, final value y okay this can be done using standard scalar many others also there i just have named one more which is called as a min max scalar okay refer that uh, see how it's going to perform the scaling operation okay all right now i want to perform the scaling right let me try to do that now as you know this will be performed on only the continuous features so because of that only we have separated continuous features and the categorical features in the previous step okay so let's do that so this is how you do it in order to uh, in order to apply the standard scalar so ultimately i want a data frame that's why ppd data frame comes at the outermost side okay outermost bracket is corresponding to that or what i want i have want to apply the std standard scalar you have to tell apply means inside the the scikit learn it is called as a fit transform all right that that's the command fit underscore transform as you can see right it came fit transform on what 
I have to say on what? On my the data. So fit transform is a function. So you will uh, put inside the parenthesis. Okay, on the bike share one, because if you remember bike share one means it's the updated, right? Uh, one, line number 19. So we dropped unwanted columns. So on that, I want to apply, okay? Not the one which was given initially. So bike share one, again, I don't want that to be applied on the complete bike share one because the complete bike share one has continuous as well as the categorical features. So what we can do now, uh, we'll try to uh, perform what is called as uh, the standard scalar only on the continuous features. Okay, so bracket, uh, square brackets, continuous features. Okay, and right, you also have to specify like this, so comma, columns equal to continuous features. Okay, for more help, go to the standard scalar question mark. It will give you the complete details. You can read, right, what we are trying to pass. Okay, so many other options are also there. You can pass many more things, but yes, we are not uh, touching all the other values. This is the simplest form in which you can apply the standard scalar. All right, so I will check again, right, what, whether, whether anything, uh, any change that actually took place with my data. Right? In terms of rows and columns should not change. Only their values should change. Right? So this is this is a fundamental idea. Okay, so let me check that by uh, by checking the shape of my data. Let's see. So I can I can try to write uh, the scaled data. I'll do dot shape. Yeah. So that only those four columns have been changed, okay? Only the scaled data is what I have now, four columns. Rows remain same. All right, I'll show you another way, another view of our data set now. Okay, so that should be all categorical features, yeah. For every categorical feature, scaled data of i, it's already a data frame, so I can I can simply put it over there. Okay, so equal to bike share one of i because i comes from the categorical feature. Every categorical feature becomes is is going to be added now. Okay, so dot uh, values. All right. Uh, no, not value counts, it's just values. All right, then scaled data. Okay, okay, before that, let me show you the uh, scaled data once so that we understand what exactly we are doing. Okay. Uh, I'll show you the scaled data. Okay, only four columns, all right? Now, this is what happened with the scale data. I have performed the standard scaling over here. Now you see, this is what I typed. This happens, this runs, and now I'll show you the scale data. Because this, I, I want a complete data set, right? So other columns are actually added to this. So whatever columns, remaining columns were there right after this, you see season, year, month, holiday, weekday, etc. they are added now, that's all. So that additional, adding the uh, categorical columns to my data set 
happened because of this code. Okay, so standard scaling is done only for the continuous columns. To that data data frame itself, I'm appending, I'm adding those columns which are the which are called as uh, the categorical ones. Okay, so let me know if you have any doubt with this so far. So what's staying after the line number two? Sorry, can you can you repeat the question? Audio is not here. So what's staying after the line number two? Line number twenty. Twenty four. Twenty four. Okay. Okay. What happened after that? After that, you can see these columns, season, year, etc., have been added. Okay, they were not present here. You see, look at the scaled data; they were not there. Okay, only four columns were there. Now, if you see here, right, for every categorical feature, every I in the sense, every column that's in the categorical feature, I am adding that. So, scaled data equal to from the bike share data, take them and put it here, is what we are doing. Okay, so because of which I added so many columns. All right, fine. Then, now there is one more step. For categorical data also, there has to be something very similar to uh, what we have done that is called as uh, 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 the scaling, right? But it is not called as a scaling because they are discrete values. For discrete values, you will perform what is called as encoding. Okay, remember the word, it is called as encoding, right? So now, what do you mean by encoding? What is, what is the fundamental side? So already we know that, right? I want every uh, value in a particular column sh should be unique. It's already unique in case of uh, the discrete or the categorical col column. For example, you may see that uh, uh, something like, uh, you may see one column having, say, values like 1, 2, 3, 4. One of them will be present at a particular point, like maybe the weather part. Okay. But what we expect is, right, instead of get, having four different values in a particular column, right, whenever a particular value is 1, all others should be 0. Again, this is something like giving more information to the machine. Instead of, again, this is done from the research, right? People have already done the research and uh, they have, right, given a result in, in terms of the publications, in terms of uh, writing the papers, right? Uh, in the conferences, etc. You can see this, you can, you can refer this. And they say the result of their, uh, what you call, research says that if you are dealing with the discrete columns, like categorical data, I have just ones or zero, let's say. Right. What you have to do instead of giving a single column with one ones and zeros, you convert that into two columns. And two columns because I have only two values like zeros and ones. Let's say. Okay. So why how you convert a single column containing zeros and ones into two columns? This is how you do. Wherever you, wherever your values are one, other values are zero. Keep as it is. But in your new column. Wherever you have zeros in the previous column, convert them into ones and convert the ones into zeros. Like right? two values means two columns. Okay, but what happens if you have three columns? You may have original values like zero, one, and two. Now, according to this encoding scheme, I'll give you the name of encoding uh, in, in some time. I'll also give you uh, what to search, right? So if you have three values in a column, zero, one, and two, what you do first remove the make zeros and twos as zeros all are you keep zeros okay zero only one will be retained 
one wherever you see one it will come the next column wherever you have zeros that will become one all others become zeros and the third column only twos will become ones others are zero everything is binary representation okay everything is binary representation you will write only zeros or ones okay so which means in my original uh, representation of the column everywhere you have zeros only they will become ones in one of the column other one and two will become zero the second column only ones will be one zero and two will be zeros one more column right so only the twos will become one saying that okay this is true so that all others in the sense zeros and ones will become zero so i am converting uh, a single column having three different categorical values into three columns now right this may look right this is going to be a, a complex right calculation complex in a sense i am trying to increase the dimensions but yes since they are represented still in the binary format machine right now is it it, it it becomes easy for the machine to understand right yes or no type of question in the sense only when there there are ones right it says okay that is a feature which i have to learn when you have another feature like the original feature has been divided into three parts now so it becomes more clear for machine to understand rather than having number one two three it becomes easy for machine to understand zeros and ones so anyway we know that the whole uh, computer architecture is based on right uh, the working of a computer is based on binary true false or more specifically low voltage and high voltage so it's because of that reason right representation of this kind of right uh, encoding helps in in learning right in learning more so for continuous we have done the scaling applied scan standard scaling okay but for uh, what is called as uh, uh, for categorical data we have to apply the encoding and there is one very standard encoding that is available i'll show you which already has been imported okay so this is the one sklearn preprocessing we have imported one hot encoder all right so just since it is already there type one hot encoder question mark run that cell you get the complete help related to that okay so what i do i'll directly write what i'm supposed to do so the sklearn's procedure is pretty much same like you see here previously i wanted to apply the standard scalar i had to create one instance of that and i had to use it same thing happens with this all right so what i do i'll create uh, one hot equal to one hot encoder then one hot one hot encoded that is equal to it's one hot you see the same thing i want to apply something means it's fit so fit transform now this one hot encoding works only on the uh, the categorical data right so i need to make sure that i will pass only the categorical part to this so it's actually present in my previous uh, uh, data previously updated data that's called as it's a scaled data and in the scaled data i want to apply uh, this transform only for the the categorical features categorical features is a variable which holds the names of only categorical right uh, columns then i want uh, this I'll, I'll in order to just to show you that i'll convert this into dot two to array all right so i'll this comes to array then one hot encoded dot sheet
let me check again one hot encoder encoded equal to one hot bit transform scaled data of the categorical features dot to array yes okay so we had lesser number of columns in among the uh, what you call the categorical features right so if you look at the categorical features they were just like leave the first uh, few uh, first four uh, remaining one year, the season year month holiday weekday and weather seat only six were there now the six are converted into how much see that is 31 because some of them have four some of them have six uh, sorry seven days right etc so one column which was having just seven is split it into seven columns one which has only four split it into four columns and so on okay like that so you apply this to the complete uh, categorical data now you see i have 31 columns okay and i can i can show you i can show you a view also by just calling one hot encoded right it's an array because i converted into array just to show you just because of that now you see then then there will be a question in your mind because uh, it's a data frame and in a data frame i know that there is there is a particular column called season okay that season now the season is split into four columns correct because there were four seasons correct are you understanding the point what is a name because name has there has to be a name to uh, a series right it's a panda series every column is a panda series now panda series is invalid if you don't have a column name remember remember the basics of pandas now i said that one hot encoder automatically splitted that into four different columns because i had four different values i have to justify what is the name given correct what happens with the name will it assign something automatically or how is it happening i'll show you that okay so let me try to uh, do something all right uh, let me all right so let me try to write okay, we'll go, uh, line number 26 line number six. yeah sorry you, you want to move to the right yes okay yeah so you, you copy that's this. the last part last part sure okay so thank you sure Now, what happens to the names is a big question now. Normally, I get that question. Okay, so before you ask, I'll try to answer that now itself. Okay, so I'll create a cat uh, categorical F E T U R E S. I'll create something. Okay, categorical features equal to in the one part. I already have used this. That's why I can't bring it. So I have a method called as get underscore uh yeah get features name out I'll, I'll bring it okay now what i do i'll try to put this into a list uh is it list no it's not list it's a to list yeah okay that that's my step uh, in which I try to bring the categorical features. I think I already have uh, one name called continuous features somewhere. Let me check. Yeah, I have this. Okay. Now you see continuous features are already there, but the categorical features were there, but now they have expanded. Season actually has been split into, according to the number of seasons, so many columns. Year is divided into two columns because year was 0, 1 means only two columns, 0, 1, 2 means three columns, etc. So there, uh, there is no meaning in using the continuous features. That's why you see I assigned it to a cat features, indicating categorical features. Now you see, uh, let me give a name called feature 
names equal to there is already a continuous feature existing to this i add that means it's appending the cat features all right and let me visualize now this everything becomes very clear to you feature names see what happened temperature a temperature humidity winds that that's fine they are continuous they are continuous variables see the season there were four seasons so now you have four columns as i told right only one value will be kept in one of them others are made zero for the second column the second value is kept one others are zero and so on so years you can see there are two ones see the names automatically generated you don't have to worry month there are 12 months and so on you can see right everything is like this so that actually justifies yes this is what actually happened internally all right okay now my data set is ready okay so once you have the data set ready what i'll try to do i'll specify okay these are my features and these are my outputs okay let's do that uh sorry i'll call it as features Okay, the features equal to mp dot concatenate i think we have the scaled data right i'll specify exactly what i want so this is the scaled data i want to uh, say the temp to be present i also want uh, a temp i want uh, the humidity i want uh, wind speed okay this is what uh, comes from the continuous data and i want its values values all right uh, then i need the remaining part coming from one part encoded so encoded comes from where encoded comes from the categorical values after expanding okay so you see what i'm trying to do here is that i'm trying to concatenate right from the original data right plus the one hot encoded data then i'll also specify they they have to be concatenated right as columns i have first four columns the remaining columns should be attached right after so how do you specify that axis equal to say one all right then let me look at the features now so this is what i'm expecting as a final features so features dot shape what was my mistake i missed a comma i guess yeah sorry there has to be a comma. right so 31 columns coming from there four more columns here so 31 plus 4 35 right let me target values equal to the bike share one we actually have left with the three more columns in the main uh, this thing that's actually called casual registered as well as the count right now target dot shape 
So the number of rows remains same. I have three columns, but ultimately you see uh, what we'll do. We'll try to uh, perform uh, only only one column. Uh, I want to keep it in the target. Okay. All right. So what I do? Uh, that's my target. So I'll call only single target. Target one is equal to it's bike share one of count right uh, let me look at the shape as well right so there are uh, one seven three seven nine right values present in the in the in this particular format and uh, right there are so many values that's all right you can take it as one column or only rows that doesn't matter. That's why it's not saying that there is a one over there. All right, now, so splitting up comes into picture, X train, X test, Y train, Y test equal to train test split of your x values the features comma your y value target one so you can specify train ratio or the test size Right, uh, test size I want to keep it as maybe say 0 0.2. So we'll be splitting the data, right? Extreme dot shape, y train dot shape to check the size okay then let's do the same thing for uh, right the one that is x test dot shape y test dot All right, any, any doubt so far, please let me know. All right, so now it comes to the implementation, right, of part. Now, if you remember, we can apply uh, you you know how to apply how to how to find the the coefficients of a linear regression by using first method normal equation. There is an equation which is directly present over there. You can apply that and you can directly right perform the uh, calculation. And uh, from that, definitely we can uh, do the calculation right, uh, and uh, we can predict the uh, values. And also, you can calculate the coefficients that theta, theta values in our equation of uh, that. That's what is called as a normal equation, right? We can we can bring that into picture. All right. So that that that's one thing. So let's try to do that now. All right. So I'll call y is equal to y is equal to y y train dot values and say x is equal to np dot append what i'm doing here can anybody 
uh, can anybody recall the the uh, the basic step we have uh, uh, studied we have discussed in the theory part right before applying the what you call as the normal equation we had to do something one step right that's what i am trying to do here can anybody try to recall all right if you are able to recall please tell me okay x x train dot shape zeros comma one comma then i'll keep the x train no this is not training deepak x train comma x is equal to one okay anybody okay i'll show you the result now okay at least uh, i expect you to answer that okay i created x okay not x t let me just say so x and y now you see the x shape x was a 35 it became 36 at least now are you able to recall something what is happening it again if you if you look carefully i say that i am appending once x is equal to one that means column i'm making one i'm adding a column of once one 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 everywhere this is my data the features i add once to that so the question is why So if I have two features, two features, x1, x2, one column, two column, how many parameters were there? How many thetas were there when, when, we did, when we did the mathematics, right? When we did the mathematics, maybe in the form of uh, matrix or maybe in any other form, any other form, okay? Uh, doesn't matter. Irrespective of that, okay? So my question is that, what exactly happened right uh, how many parameters were how many theta values were used when there were two x values x1 x2 corresponding to x1 i have theta 1 corresponding to x2 i have a parameter theta 2 plus there is a theta naught correct constant value my intercept if i have a y axis here where my line crosses y axis is the intercept to represent a intercept i we denoted a theta naught See, this theta naught was supposed to be used for many values, right? Every value in the column. So how do you do that? You have put one, 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 one over there. Refer your material, whichever was shared earlier, right? So related to the uh, theory part of the discussion, a PDF you have there. Open that and see, there is a matrix of all one, one, one as a last column. That's what we are doing here. Okay, go back, refer to that. I'll give say 30 seconds, come back. Now I'm going going to the next step. I'll I'll keep typing. Meanwhile, if you have any doubt related to that, after you refer the material and you have a doubt, come back and ask me that. Till then, I'll keep writing. Okay. So the normal equation comes into picture. In order to apply the normal equation, I need that x transpose. Correct. So that is I'll write it as x underscore t to remember that this is a transposed matrix. So that is numpy dot transpose we have yeah we have a function called transpose then i'll write x so that is x transpose then in the equation one of the parts is you need to multiply x and x transpose all right i'll i'll write it i'll try to remember that there is a dot product okay x and xt dot is nothing but i just have to perform 
the x transpose dot x all right might take some time depend depending on the computer speed yeah i got an answer then i hold see x in x transpose into x whole inverse there is a part okay i'm doing step by step so i'll hold it in a temporary variable temp1 is equal to numpy dot uh, linear algebra l i n yeah it's linear algebra in that i have inverse of a matrix present right what i want the previous answer that is x underscore xt whatever we wrote just now right this its inverse is what i want i'll take that then temp1 dot let's see okay so because inverse is possible only for a square matrix right i should get a square matrix as answer that's why i checked whether i am getting that or not all right so my equation of the 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 normal equation has x transpose into x whole inverse into x transpose y correct that's my equation but i am doing step by step right this is not using any of the uh, what you call uh, built in functions or any of the uh, the library without using that we are trying to do later on we'll see okay <clears throat> i did that the next part i should perform temp2 is equal to x transpose dot uh, say y okay then now you get the final answer that is what are the coefficients let me try to write this is the final answer right the coefficients the theta is equal to right this the temp1 and temp2 i should take a dot product right so i'll write the coefficients equal to the temp1 into temp2 so coefficients dot shape there are 36 coefficients so 35 for 35 columns plus 1 which is a constant All right, now I'll tell you. So we did this in so many steps, right? You can see step number one, two, three. Leave the shape part. One, two, three, four, five. Five different lines of code have been written, but uh, it is possible to do that. Do the same thing in uh, right uh, in a using the linear algebra concepts. We can do that in a single uh, line. That that that's what. But before that, we we may have to. Uh, one or two steps of are required other than the main line so let's do that uh, y is equal to do, do we have y y already there what is y uh, let me just check one second sorry yeah y is equal to y train dot values we already have it okay then x equal to np right we have done that okay okay let me use a y now once again let, let me show you what you can do Right. This is uh, okay. Let me try to like this. Right. I want to write a single block of code. Let me try to do again. This is y train y train dot values that's my first step then i'll call x it's already we have used x so i'll call it as xb equal to np dot concatenate 
np dot once x train dot shape of zero i think i think we already have done that but you don't have uh, this only one cell is necessary for you to understand what exactly is happening so not the all steps so i'm giving a short annotation for you okay so all right so we have np of ones all right so let me use it comma uh, what happened just a second sorry let me check once again uh, i missed it x train of this this zero comma one okay comma x extreme all right i close then i'll tell axis equal to one this means i'm adding a column all right so i actually have added a column to uh, my data right that that step already we have done i'm writing it once again that's all okay so then in the next step you see i can directly use this equation so i i we called it as theta star so theta is the parameter theta star is the optimum parameter right directly we can get into that right this is what we have uh, discussed so theta star is our notation even in the theory so when you read the theory how to get a theta star this is what you do so np dot linear algebra in that take me the inverse right inverse of do it step by step so that is i called x as xb right xb that's fine dot transpose dot xb all right so that that's my first step inverse has been taken of this dot take another dot in the sense of product what you are going to consider here it should be xb transpose dot y okay that is your theta star now let me check the shape of the theta star okay just a second theta star dot shape same thing you can see here 36 i got right i am getting the same thing so theta star holds the optimum value so uh, one thing i want you to note is only this line single line that performs that implements the normal equation okay so x transpose into x is here that whole should be taken as inverse so that's why the inverse is written here okay then into x transpose y okay this is x transpose y okay take some time get adjusted to this kind of representation right and if you have any doubt please go ahead okay now in the next step let's try to go with the the y cap so i call it as y y predicted equal to you have a x with you so i call it as x b right dot you have to pass the uh, the theta star okay right so uh, you will pass t 
theta star. This is a method of passing the theta star. And uh, once you have that, I think we have uh, what is called as a mean squared error function. I'll just show you that. It's already uh, there. So you see the mean squared error calculation function is already there. Okay. So we'll be using them. Sorry? Raven. Yeah. What is that? Dot revel, one second. I'll show you the complete details. Right? It's actually returns a flattened array, right? Flattened array is in the sense if you have multiple multi dimensional data, it will become a single dimension. That's what I want, right? Because exit train will go, right, in, in a particular fashion. It has to match. To match that, whenever we don't know, what is the order? What is the shape? It automatically adjusts the shape if you call the function called right revel. Okay. So Thank flattened you. array is a is the meaning of that. Right. So I have this. So when you have a y predicted, I know what are my y values. I can calculate a error, right? So there is already we have uh, the mean squared error with us, right? So I'll just call it mean squared error of y predicted comma y train dot values. We get a value. Okay, this is the error, sum of the error. Mean value of the squared errors taken as sum. Okay, now what I do, I'll write a function so that I can call that function depending upon the number of times I want to call. And I can, I can calculate the mean square error separately for uh, training as well as the testing. Okay, so this is what is important. I have not done the testing part yet, right? So let's go for that. Before that, let me try to define, okay? Define, calculate, say MSE is my function. Okay, I have some X coming, a Y value coming, I call it as Y testing. Or you can even call simply Y, doesn't matter, okay? And uh, I also pass the coefficients to this, right? Once I pass them, this has to calculate the error now. So MSE should be written. So what I do, I'll try to create, uh, first I'll create X, I'll update the X. X is equal to NP dot append, right? The same thing we did earlier. All right, so I have to append np dot once shape of zero comma one. Okay, then I have to write x comma axis equal to one. Okay, so that is done in the first step. Then call the function. I'll call it as a score. Score is equal to it's a mean squared error of the y that we have now dot y dot values comma i'll i already have a x right that x dot coefficients so just now we have done the same step but i'm going to uh, write it inside a function so that i can return okay uh, simply return score All right, 
so that returns anyway we, we we are going to use it now so training sorry training error equal to i'll call this function calc mean square error of x x train that's x y train that says comma what we called uh, we called as uh, do we have coefficients with us uh, don't remember whether we have coefficients yeah we have coefficients c o e f s right 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 so let, we can pass it that's what is training error testing error equal to calculate mean square error of now what you pass you you pass uh, the testing data okay so that is x x test and y y test again coefficients then i will print i'll i'll test the train error as sorry the train error and the test error both of them we can see using this technique Okay, any doubt? Any doubt so far? Let's go ahead. okay now so this is this is the manual calculation so manual calculation refer to uh, uh, we are writing the code from scratch right so now i'll tell you right how do we go ahead with the uh, the the built-in right i should know how to do the built-in as well how to use the built-in function right let's use the sklearn and uh, let's do the uh, regression part out of it okay so uh, we already have the train test data set with us right also we know what is the target okay let me let me check the target one is the name i'll just verify once yeah target one is equal to uh, bike share one dot cnt all right so we have it readily available with us so let me try to create uh, what is called as uh, The, the 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 steps we follow remains almost the same okay irrespective of which method uh, whether we are building a model whether we are building a one hot encoder or uh, the scaling standard scalar almost same so i have to create an instance now so this is the instance i am trying to create linear model dot there is a linear regression you create it then what you are supposed to do you have to <coughs> there there is a method uh, whenever you now i am training a model i am not converting something into something else so like the previous case one hot encoding and the standard scalars are right converting thing into something else now not, not doing that now i am trying to fit it's it's a training process so you just have to call a function called fit okay so that is dot fit x train comma y train then 
okay i'll just call pred because already there is another name for uh, predicted i guess so that means this is equal to dot the function name is predict what do you want to predict which is your input that is x x test okay so may take some time yeah it ran so you see everything we did so far is just three lines of code in if you if you are using the built-in so but built-in actually what's happening on the background if you want to know you have to implement manually okay so that that's the thing then definitely go for the msc underscore i call it as linear regression msc lr is equal to i don't have any other method i have to call the same right this is y y test comma the pred right this is what we have uh, been using so far then okay then let's okay so that's a value so uh, the built-in function is actually they, they have done what is called as a, uh, you can see the the, the er difference in the errors just because it's well tuned right rather than simple application of this they have well tuned that. that that's one thing all right so you can do this so just four lines of code to do the complete thing we had discussed we have we were discussing so far right the complete thing that means it is starting from uh the first step right of having x and y right splitting that up etc everything right uh, the prediction implementation of the normal equation everything comes into picture right by just these four lines of code including this we need one more thing all right so that is nothing but the calculation of what you call as r2 score correct so if you remember r2 score can be calculated using the y test this is the truth with the predicted so what do you mean by this what what is your conclusion Anything that is close to zero is somewhat a mean fit. It's not a good fit, right? Maybe you need to co co collect more data. Maybe you need to, right? Uh, maybe you may have to expand the columns as well, get more features so that this can get a good insight of the data and, right, do a better prediction. So that's that's what is a conclusion that you can draw from this particular uh, result.